song that will be singing, every word that will be spoken will echo through the air and the atmosphere, God, and that will reach the ears of those that are lost on today, God, so that they can find favor and grace, hallelujah, in you, oh God. Let us, God, become a beacon of light to those that are lost, those that are in dark places. Let them know today, God, that they can see the light at the end of the tunnel and they are closer than what they, what they realize. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you today, God, because we are healed spiritually, mentally, and physically right now, God. And I declare we're healed financially in the mighty name of Jesus, God. For you are merciful. You are merciful. Hallelujah. You are merciful. You are merciful. You are rich in mercy. Hallelujah. You never run dry. Hallelujah. And God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you for sending help to that woman that was willing to commit suicide. I thank you for sending help to that man that almost overdosed. I thank you, God, for saving that child, hallelujah, from being abused, hallelujah. I thank you, God, hallelujah, for saving that family from being evicted. I Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for stretching every dollar out of your people pocket so that they know, hallelujah, that the well does not run dry if we trust in you, God. You are amazing. God, I pray your strength, hallelujah, in the sick and shed in on today. Somebody got bad news. Somebody was told they can't make it. Hallelujah. They wasn't going to make it. But God, I declare that the devil is a lie today. They will be healed. They will be healed. They will overcome right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For your word says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And today, God, we got joy. God's great joy today. Hallelujah. And I give honor to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, honor to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, your name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 For your word declares, hallelujah, Psalms 27, the Lord is my light in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Though a host shall come against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing, hallelujah, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, hallelujah, all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and the inquiries of his temple. For in the time of trouble, he should hide me in his pavilion, in the secret places of his tabernacles. Should he hide me, he should set me upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies around about me. Hallelujah. God will deliver. God will deliver. God will make a way. And God, I thank you. I glorify you today. I give you the praise and I give you the honor, God. Hallelujah. God, as the rain falls today, God, I pray that you would give those traveling mercy on the roads as they travel today, God. 
I pray that God, hallelujah, that they will find favor as they come, hallelujah, to service on this morning. I pray that God, hallelujah, that the strength, hallelujah, that comes straight from your throne room will strengthen them, hallelujah, with the strength they need to press on and be strong because you are an amazing God and I thank you, God, hallelujah. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. As we celebrate these, this ninth year for this whole month, God, we celebrate nine years, God. I thank you, God, hallelujah, for nine years, God. You are an amazing God. You are our rock, God, hallelujah. You are the chief cornerstone, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. We blow kisses to you today, God that you may just come in and have your way. Woo. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Lord. God, we worship you today, God.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, everybody. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you just help yourself and praise him? Jesus. Let me hear you say it. Worship the Lord in this place. To worship you. 
You get it on you, your spirit. I bet you things have changed for you. Oh. Worship him because doors are opening right now. Oh. Your old had just changed your status. Listen, when we give God praise, it changes things. When we give God praise, it elevates us. When we give God praise, it, 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 it goes above the enemy's head. Let me show let me show you something real quick. It was praise that changed Paul and Silas' status. It was praise, hallelujah, that brought down the walls of Jericho. It was because of their praise, their unity, their oneness that God knocked down walls and knocked down. Mm. That when the people of God turn their pity into praise, it changed their status. Change their status. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. Yes, Lord. I hear the Lord saying, Hallelujah. You're no longer in that trap. God has freed you. Somebody give God praise right now. out that when you give up on worrying, that's when God can come in and change your situation. Your situation will never change if you're worrying about it. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let it go. Let it go. Because when you let that thing go, that's when God can step in and handle that situation for you. It's an old saying, when we do what we can, God will do what we can't do. Because you've done everything you possibly can do, but what you can't do is fix it with your own strength. But God, but God, but God, but God. Somebody give God a hand praise. Listen, this is one of those days I, I woke up and I felt, you know, kind of tired, but I kind of moved on, moved on through it. When it rains, it kind of like shifts your mood. Hallelujah. Some people don't want to get out the bed when it rains because it does something to you. Make you want to just make you feel like you want to sleep a little bit longer. But if God slept on us, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. How many of y'all called on the Lord? And, and if, if, if when you called on him, didn't he show up? Now, if he slept on you when you called him, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That'd be a problem right there, wouldn't it? Hallelujah. Somebody need to give God praise. Amen, amen, amen. Look, we, 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 we're going to be celebrating nine years for this whole month, and uh, I thank God for all of you all. I thank God for you all just being faithful like y'all are, and God, is, God ain't through today. God is about to do some more great and wonderful things, amen, in spite of what the enemy tried to do. Somebody say the enemy tried to do. Hallelujah. He, he tried so many different things, but the devil is a liar. Amen. Somebody, come on, that's right. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Whew. I was just, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll just flip the page and I'll, and it'll just land on something randomly. And, I, and the, you know, it landed on, in the book of Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, where it talks about the clay in the potter's hand. How many of y'all know that God is able to make you over? Hallelujah. I know sometimes we'll go to like makeup uh, artists and they'll, women get their makeup done and, you know, stylists, they'll do your hair for you. You know, I used to, when I used to go and get my hair cut, uh, when I had hair, they'll say, how you want it cut? I said, I just make me look good, make me feel good. And the barber just, just do, he'll, he'll do his thing. And when you walk up out of there as a man, when you can look in the mirror and see that your hair is done real good and you, you'll feel good about yourself. Shape your beard up, put some color into it, amen. But my wife don't want me to get rid of this gray in my beard, amen. So I'm going to keep that for her, amen. Hallelujah. So, but, but it's something that if you allow God to make you over, I'm going to tell you what happens when God makes you over. 
He gets rid of all of those friends that you were used to running to. Come on, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. He moved out of your way all of the obstacles that you were used to doing. Hallelujah. He moved those things out of your way. He moves out of your way, uh, strongholds out of your way. When God makes you over, he reboots you. Hallelujah. Anybody need a rebooting in this place today? Need their mind rebooted? Hallelujah. Need to be restored? Need to be refreshed? God said, I'm here today, and I'm coming to reboot. Hallelujah. Because every once in a while we got to go and, you know, we got all of our, everybody got different kinds of electronics. And every once in a while you'll find that your, your, uh, your, your, um, your, your, your uh, electronic is, how can I put the word right here, the word I'm looking for, that it's not enough room for what you want to download. The storage, storage is not enough room for you what you want to store. So when you go in to uh, up, update an app, the app may say can't update. There's not enough room. And your device might take you to your storage room, and there may be something on your device that you no longer need that you got to go in and delete. Hallelujah. So every once in a while, you might want to delete some old photos. You might want to delete some old apps. You might want to delete some old gangs. You might want to delete some old things in there. Hallelujah. That's what God wants you to do today. Just go through your life and just start deleting stuff. Deleting stuff. Deleting stuff. I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need him. I don't need her. Oh my God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Because sometimes, have you ever felt overwhelmed? Let me say this to y'all. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? To the point where it just seemed like that the walls were collapsing in on you. And the only reason why we'll get to this place in our life where we feel like the walls are about to collapse, we feel overwhelmed, and that's God saying it's time to delete some stuff. Woo, Deacon Davis, I don't think they hear me right now. Hallelujah, because every once in a while you got to go through your life Look at yourself. You got to look at that man in the mirror and you got to say to yourself, enough is enough. I got to delete this. I got to delete that. I'm through with this. I'm not answering their calls. I'm not. Come on, somebody give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to thank the Lord for this wonderful day on today. Thank the Lord for uh, and believe in God for the healing power to those that are watching via Facebook Live, YouTube, that God will cover their lives. Pastor Terry, hallelujah. The twins, God bless y'all. Amen. We lift you guys up to the Lord. Amen. Those that are absent from the body of Christ on today, we lifting them up from the, to the Lord on today. We give God praise for them. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Look, let's, let's, let's get the scripture on the board. We're going to get the scripture on the board. We're going to move right along, amen. We got a lot of stuff we got to do on today, amen. And Amando today, he's going to be preaching over at, uh, hmm. Logos Community Church on today, amen. We want to believe God for that, amen. I ain't see him all day yesterday. I think he he was down there studying, getting this study on, amen. And uh, when we do, when we, we got to study for the Lord. When we don't study for the Lord, when we go in another person's house, we really won't know what to say. But God always has something else to say, so I'm definitely going to go over there and support him on today as God opened him up, amen. This is his first time leaving the ministry, going and he'll be, I think he's going to be speaking to the youth on today, amen. So we believe in God for that. The praise team going to be praise dancing over there also. Amen. God is about to do great things. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give God another praise. We got this stripped up on the board. Amen. We're going to be going to St. Mark's 11th chapter, the 22nd verse. Jesus. 
as we're standing all over the building. Last week Sunday we had an outstanding service. It was outstanding. But you know what? The enemy always have a way to try to steal your joy. But somebody say, I still got joy. <laughs> Amen. The Bible reads as follows. I want you to repeat after me. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He, I, shall have whatsoever I say it. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye should have them. Somebody says, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's yours. It's yours. You need to grab a hold of it. It's yours. Grab a hold of it. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. But I'm going to put it like this. Everybody that didn't grab theirs, I'll take theirs. I'll take theirs. I'll take theirs. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you stand praying... Forgive if you have aught against any that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. And the word of God is blessed. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Come on, praise team. Let's give us a selection, amen. Then we're going to raise the offering, amen. Let's give God praise for the praise team. want to say that I love you more than anything. Help me say I lift, I lift my hands and toes of adoration unto you. You reign, you reign on the throne for you are God and God. I just want to say that I 
love you more than anything. I just want to say, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Let's start from the top. I lift, I lift my hands and toes of adoration unto you. You reign. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to I you. Can sing to you this song. I just want to say, I just want to say that I love you more than I just want to say, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you.
help me sing. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell Just want you, to tell you, Lord, I love. If you, can, if you have breath in your body, I want you to help us sing it this last time. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Let 
Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Washing me, 
Hallelujah. Y'all came to church tired. I've been up since like 1 a.m. But I'm up here. I'm going to still give God the glory. Hallelujah. Because I thank him for my hands that I get to clap. I thank him for the breath that he gives me. I thank him for the ear to hear. And that's why I praise him. Over the little things that we take for granted. Now we're going to try this one more time. And I want you to get that one thing on your mind. That you thank God for. That only God could have done. That only God could have saved you from. I want you to get that praise in your belly right now. We're going to try this one more time. Hey. Hey. Oh, hey, come on, put your hands together in this place. Hey, say, Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock, Lord, I thank you for saving my sister, Lord, I thank you for saving my cousin. Lord, I thank you for having your way, for having your way, for having your way. God, with my family, with my family, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock. Lord, I thank you for never letting me go. Lord, I thank you for giving me strength. Lord, I thank you for giving me strength. Lord, I thank you. 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 For saving me, for saving me, for saving me, for saving me. is the rock that's why we say blessed be the rock of my salvation Woo! hallelujah hallelujah I can dance on that rock I can leap on that rock I can shout on that rock and I can say blessed be the rock Come on, somebody, give God praise. Look. Sandra, you want to do the announcement? You want to? Huh? I don't know if Vivian came and she was Samson. Okay, go ahead. the church anniversary, we were asking for $25 project um, donation for the church. Um, pastors don't want to call the building fund, so we're calling it the project. So um, $25 um, assessment for today for the um, anniversary. So it's not too late if you still want to do that. Amen. Amen. Even I got to give to that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God praise. We are we're going to be a blessing unto the Lord. Amen. And again, you guys can also give that through Giveify. We see that dollar amount. We know where it goes to. Amen. Um, I want to thank all you do it. Do give through Giveify. A lot of us give through Giveify. And I am grateful. Amen. That's going to be it. 
you know, we, we getting away from carrying cash in our pocket. We got credit cards that we can cancel if somebody took our wallets. Hallelujah. But if they get their cash in that wallet, they ain't, you can't cancel their cash. It's, amen. Coming at the end time now. But we got to be careful. Amen. We're going to follow the direction of the usher, amen, as she lead us, amen. You can come up, touch the basket, amen. Hallelujah. God is good, God is good, God is good. He's worthy to be praised. I want to thank God for all of you all being here on today. God for my lovely wife. Amen. Hallelujah. And while you're giving and while you're coming, just 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 look at somebody that says good to see you today. Amen. Amen. We got uh, we got a lot going on this next part, this next hour. We're gonna be doing a lot of stuff, amen. God is good. I can't wait till next year. I'm believing God that you know sometime next year we're gonna be breaking ground for the extension, expansion. Amen. I'm believing God. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and I'm going to order me a silver shovel. And I'm going to get a gold one. One for the west wing of the building and one for the east wing of the building. And I'm going to believe God for that expansion. Hallelujah. I know when I believe my wife she texted uh, Rodney's wife and let her know that it wasn't practice on Wednesday but Rodney wasn't having that I felt so bad I wanted to come up here to open the door so he can practice amen as he called me and he called me and he said pastor I don't believe it I don't believe it I don't believe it I don't believe it right then. Amen. I said, I can't talk you down. Amen. But I like his faithfulness of being right there. He came right to this ministry a couple of years ago, and he saw those bongos not being played, and he said, can I play those? And I said, they're yours. <laughs> and he's been beating on them ever since. My grandson started school last week. Amen. Little Jeffrey, first day. Jeff. Started school last week, right? See, he's forgetting his head. Yup, yup, yup. And you know, be, Friday when he went to school, because all, all the kindergartens came to school on Friday, and he started begging and said, I want to go to church. Now, for the last four years of his life, this is where he's been, church, church. I just pray to God that as he get older, 
he continue to want to come to church. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet. We're going to pray over this offering. We're going to believe God for some great things. Every time I see you, Joanne and Joyce, I see y'all with that oil I gave y'all. I gave y'all that about, what, five years ago? And it just amazes me how faithful y'all kept up with those things. I know a lot of y'all still got it. Y'all probably don't wear it as much as they do. But they wear that oil faithfully because when, when they break it, they believe in God. They believe it. Hallelujah. The oil, the blood still works. Amen. Point your hand this way. Spirit of the living God, we thank and praise you for this offering. We thank you for everybody that gave and those that didn't have to give. I'm asking that, God, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't have a room enough to receive. Now bless this offering and the purpose in which it will um, and bless this offering and the purpose in which it will be used. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm kind of stumbling over my words, but that's okay. Hallelujah. I'm just excited. Nine years. Somebody say nine years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got a lot going on, but so we're going to take this next phase to the next level. Those of you that ain't been here, those of you that are guests on today, remain standing if you will. God bless my mother. I thank God my mother is coming in. Amen. Give my praise for her coming in here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want y'all to repeat out to me, Lord. Enlarge my territory. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need a little room. Because God is about to span my territory. Somebody say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Now, now, excuse me. I, 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 I really want God to do something real big. But come here, honey, if you don't mind. Hallelujah. We're going to touch and agree. I want you to go to that wall while I get on this wall. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. And I want all the saints of God that believe God for expansion in their lives to stretch their arms out. Hallelujah. And I want you to repeat out to me, Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. Now, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Now, give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's going to do it because he can. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to do it because he can. He'll do it because he can. I hear the Lord saying, don't settle. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't settle for just enough. Because God is a God of more than enough. Now give God praise for more than enough. Amen. Now can we get the announcements? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I, I had to go to the Lord and I said, Lord, listen. Hallelujah. I started off with just enough, but I wind up with more than enough. Uh, and I thank God uh, because he's a God uh, of more than enough. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shout glory. Shout glory. Woo! Listen, 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 listen. Listen, Pastor Charles. The Lord showed me an image. He said, look, some of us will carry more than we can handle until we can't carry no more. But God said, look, if you take your arms like this and just wrap it around spiritual things uh, and God said I'll cause an overflow to come on I'm hugging everything that God has for me it's causing me to overflow give God one more praise amen amen God is good and he's good all the time. And we just want to thank him for being who he is at Redeemed Faith. And man, he blessed us with nine years. Last week was the actual anniversary, but we celebrating today. Our announcements are as follows. Uh, ministers, deacon, and deaconess class every first Sunday at 10 a.m. From the pastor today, Sunday, September 11th, we are in the midst of our ninth year anniversary. God is so good and all that he does, and he definitely, he definitely doing a new thing. Amen. Also, I have two announcements to announce um, in regards to all of us. Pastor Emery, Pastor Emery, they did ask Pastor Emery to speak a little bit about all of us, um, but I know they'll be here Thursday signing people up for, um, that want to get signed up, and they'll also be here Saturday doing the, um, doing the live. These are the two flyers that you have in your, your program. So if you want to come out, um, Pastor Emery is going to elaborate a little bit more on these for me. This is a really uh, a wonderful program. If you're interested in learning about your health, your history, your DNA, uh, one thing the program, it does, it, uh, it tests your uh, gen gen genomics. It deals with the DNA. It also um, uh, does the physical measurements. It also uh, tests out the environment. You see how the environment's affecting your health, medications. What is it that's affecting your health that keeps you from being uh, healthy? And not only that, it, it also uh, provides like uh, genetics. So it goes into the histories of where your ancestry comes from. And, and you also have an electronic uh, record that's stored in their system that's secure, where only you have access to see that history. And it's a really wonderful program. I'm on the advisory board, been on that for a little over two years now. And we meet every quarter just to find out what's a better way to effectively uh, find out how to test people's health. And one of the things they do is saliva test, but most of all, the more effective way is the blood test. So they test your blood, and then they do a study on your blood, and that's how they find out uh, where, where diabetes comes from, where's heart conditions coming from, where's your liver being affected. So whatever health issues that you have, the program, when you sign up for it, when you go for your intake, it's about, a, about an hour and a half, about an hour and a half intake. So they, have to, they show you videos of what the program's about and all the different ins and outs of the program and how you can find out about your health to make yourself better. So it's a really wonderful program. I encourage many people to sign up for it. I already got quite a few people signed up right now. They got over 90, 98,000 people 
nationwide already done signed up with this program. So it's a really wonderful program, and they're trying to expand and continue to expand, and they keep sending out uh, information to get more people to get interested. And, and if you have any questions or anything of that sort, they also invite the questions. If there's anything you want to know about your health that your doctors is not telling you, they can find it out from the study that they do for your health. So we want to encourage you to come out on Thursday to have a sign up for the program. Come out on Thursday, sign up, and also Saturday they will be doing the DNA testing. So it's more than just finding out about like your genealogy, where where your bloodline comes from. It's also finding out about your health, and they do encourage you to share this information with your doctors to come up with a plan to. Um, to not only, you know, treat the problem, but to probably more than likely get rid of the problem. Amen. So that's Thursday. The yeah, I got the wrong day on here. Oh, the 15th, and then Saturday the 17th. I had the wrong day on my list. Um, also, next Sunday the 25th, um, doing Sunday morning worship is our member appreciation day testimony service, and we'll have food afterwards, so come out and enjoy with us, amen, and this will be doing morning services as well. If you ride the church van, please refrain from eating in it. Um, we need to keep the van clean, so make sure that you're cleaning up behind yourselves and your children, amen. The food pantry also um, is it, not going to be open for the next two weeks. But if you are in need of food, you can come down to the um, to the church to get your food um, any time, any weekday before 2.30 p.m., amen? If you want to donate food, feel free to drop it off. We're here until 3, and then you can um, also leave it out there on the table. The um, women do use that table all the time, and it, it has been a blessing for the community. Um, there will be no candy sales today, but there will be cake and punch in, in, as part of our um, celebration after church downstairs. So after church, feel free to come down and enjoy a few punches with the church family. Amen. Are there any other announcements? second surgery on the same time so we had to have surgery on the fourth fourth surgery on the same day so let's just pray for her and ask for blessings on her and her family any guests i see that if there are any um these are the announcements please govern yourself accordingly I want to take this moment and just ask uh, Deacon and Vivian to stand up. We're going to pray for you right now. I just feel, feel the spirit of God. Just feel the spirit of God. Can you anoint her? Um, in the name of Jesus. I just want to just ask the spirit to be with you and for those children. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We want you to just begin to go on a prayer right where you are sister because I know God is the healer he's the deliverer he's able to do what the doctor seemed to be impossible and I don't know about you but I try and got for myself and he showed up every time on time and he's a God in time and father in the name of Jesus God right now I thank you for our sister oh God we decree and declare that by your stripes she is healed and delivered God uh, we bind the infirmity, oh God, the spirit of infirmity, God, to get a hold to her optical nerve, oh God. We command her to loose his hold off of her right now, God, in Jesus' name, that when she goes for the surgery, God, it will be the last surgery because, God, you're going to manifest your power. We plead the blood of Jesus right now, God. That the blood, hallelujah, it still works, oh God. We're believing by faith, oh God. When she goes to the doctor, God, 
She's going to have a testimony, oh God, that how God has already touched her by his spirit, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, build her faith, oh God. Increase her faith right now, God, to believe that hope against hope, to go against all fear, doubt, and unbelief, oh God, that you're able to do it seemingly and abundantly, but all we can ask is go think. God, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus, for the victory right now already been won, God. In Jesus' name, God, touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now, God. Let your hand touch her now, God. From the crown of her head to her soul of feet, God. She will have a God encounter like never before, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, oh God, in advance, oh God, that she's already healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Walk in faith. Because when we walk in faith, we walk in favor. When we walk in faith, we walk in favor. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Listen, Vivian, I hear the Lord saying, get your rest. Because those doctors, those nurses are going to rest. Tomorrow's going to be even better than those last four times. Come on, somebody give God praise. Jesus. Come on, bless him one more time. Bless him one more time. Vivian, look at me. Look, 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 look. When it looks like the enemy has you surrounded, God said he got one more move up his sleeves. Come on, son. One more move, and this move right here is the best move. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God one more praise. Let's give God one more big praise. Look, the praise team, they're going to be coming. The praise dancers are going to be coming. And when we're going to reveal the wall, is that after this? No, not yet. Okay. So the nine, yes, coming before the speaker. Okay, that's coming before the speaker. So I have them come up after I do that. We'll do that. We'll do that now. You ready to do that now? Because then I want the praise team to come, and then Charles is going to come up after them and bring the word. Amen. The praise dance is going to come up after them and do the, uh, then Charles will come. Amen. I thank God for my grandmother, my aunties. I got cousins. I got, good Lord, I got my mother. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for all of them. Amen. God is just good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Where's my mom? She's sitting somewhere. Right there. Oh, you sitting in the front row right there. I'm, I ain't think she's going to be sitting in the front, but thank y'all for putting her in the front. That's where she need to be at, right there. Real close to me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We came by your house yesterday, man, my lovely wife, and uh, you were gone. I know you said you was going somewhere with, uh, with uh, Nita, and you did. So I'll probably be stopping by there later on before we go to the second service. Amen. Thank God for my uncle right here. Hallelujah. How you doing, Uncle? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God, I just 
so awesome. God, he's just so awesome. Ooh, he's just man. Won't you just lay your hands on yourself and speak over yourself right now? Just speak over yourself. I am healed. I am delivered. I am beautifully and wonderfully made in his likeness in his image. I am blessed by the best. Hallelujah. Nothing less. Hallelujah. My mind is free. Just, just start speaking over yourself. You know, the, I'm ready to start talking. If you don't mind, honey, if you don't mind, come standing with me. Amen. So one of the things I've learned is that could have never done this by myself. The call to ministry was like you know, the call to God calling me to ask you for your hand. We have 30 years but 9 years of ministry. And here's the thing. It's something that we didn't choose. It was what God chose. God do the calling. And when God called, it's like it unto when he said, who should I send? And we said, Lord, send me. Because together we are me, we are I, hallelujah, we are a team together, amen. You're everything to me, you're wonderful. And I'm going to tell you, with, 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 without, if it wasn't for her, let's go back 27 years. She told me, she said, look, we, we, we're going to have to go to church. We're going to have to get your life right. We've been in church all of our, our children's lives. You've been in church practically all of your life. And ministry started where? It didn't start nine years ago. God was just getting us ready. God was just getting us ready for what we couldn't handle 27 years ago. Hallelujah. Somebody need to give God praise. Because look, honey, and look, redeemed faith. The faith we had then couldn't, can't compare to the faith we have now. Because then we would have trusted and, and counted on man support. But we to a point in our life, 39 years ago, was I said, Lord, I'll trust you. I will follow you. I'll do it. And the Lord said, look. He said, September 1st, first nine years ago, he said, then take that empty apartment and start the church. And I was so amazed that, and he said, just, he said, look, you don't got to tell everybody, just tell one person. He said, just tell Deacon Cannon. And Deacon Cannon to go do the talking. I don't know if somebody got their mic on him and we're just getting feedback, but. And God turned around and from that point, 
3234 North 14th Street, the lower level, living room, dining room. We had service in there two and a half years. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Now, that was before, that was before the two and a half year mark is where God allowed us to purchase this building debt free. Come on, somebody. Y'all need to give God praise for that. Six months later, first Sunday of September, six years ago, we had our first service upstairs in the auditorium. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. We tore down some walls in here. We done some things in here. We was getting everything down here together. I wish I, I, we, I, we got some old pictures of that right there. The wall, this wall was through. We had Mr. Da Mr. Davis, Mark Davis. We had all. We had everybody. We even, I think we even had uh, we had a lot of the the men that you don't even see here right now. You don't see every Sunday. You may see them every once in a while here painting walls. Young people, young men, young women, all up the ladders, all up the ladders, just painting the ceiling, painting the rafters. We just all over the place. And year one was just so amazing. Year two came. Started growing even more. We were down here. Year talk about a thousand things but I can say this God did it God did it hallelujah Woo, hallelujah but if it wasn't for the Lord being on our side man we would have failed we would have failed I'm going to tell you some things God showed me coming down the road or walking it just real briefly when we first started this, the, the church on 14th before I met Charles God already showed me Charles and that was and, and, and when he showed up I believe that first year he showed up and after the first time I spoke to him Everything that God said that you were dealing with, you were that person dealing with that. And, and when you came out and testified that, that first Sunday you was there, and I said, that's him. Then the honey. <laughs> that, was done, but that, that was it. That was it right there. And God started showing me other people. And he said, by the time we did get the ministry here, three years later, when we first started here, I think in that first year, that, in that I think, what was that, that, that same year when uh, Prophet Young and Minister Hibbler came over to the ministry. Now, before Minister Hibbler came, I didn't know who he was. But God already showed me him. And, and I was I was I, I I said, well then when God starts showing me things and showing me different people coming in, then it was just revelation that it's gonna work out. And then his, his, my biggest fear was getting this 9,700 square foot building was, Lord, now how in the world you going to bless me with this building? And I know the electric bill and the gas bill and the, all the bills about the building going to be real high. 
But God wasn't through. Let me show you something. I have a sister who has a brilliant mind. She said, look, we're going to start renting the hall out. We rented that hall out every month. That hall was paying for the heat bill, the gas bill. We didn't have to worry about a thing. Hallelujah. Bounce house up in the hall. People just had birthday parties. Everybody had birthday parties. And we done that. And that's how I know God said, I'll provide the way. If you would walk with me, Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you the biggest struggle getting to nine years wasn't just doing ministry. It's always confined in the marriage. Because the enemy, if he want to get to the church, he want to get to the marriage. And the attack on us, a lot of y'all don't even know about. But I'm going to tell you how some of y'all can get a clue if your leader is going through something. It's when your marriage is going through something. Because when our marriage go through something, then he attacks your marriage. And that's when we got to realize, look, if he attacking us, he's attacking everybody else. So we got to pull our way through this so that they can pull. See what I'm saying? Am I, y'all hear what I'm saying right there? So if, if y'all going through something, stop, pause. Let me pray for my pastor. Because if he gets strong, if she gets strong, then we can muscle our way through this. Show your muscles today. Show your muscles today. Show your muscles. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So nine years, nine years didn't come easy. It came because of y'all. And again, after those nine years, I knew I was going to meet in those nine years, I knew I was going to meet a woman. And I didn't know who the woman was. But I met Pastor Terry. When I met Pastor Terry, I knew she was going to be a part of this ministry. Because when God showed me Pastor Terry, I saw the woman doing ministry. And so when I met her and she began to talk to me, I begin to get revelation. So that's how God, that's how you see the revelation. You see the revelation right there. And when I see the young people that started, when we was on 14th Street, a lot of y'all that started with us on 14th Street, y'all young, raise your hand. Y'all probably teenagers now in your 20s. Raise your hand. See, I see some hands in here. Now, when I look at y'all, I can show y'all pictures of y'all when y'all was yay big. Coming to church, following behind your mama, coming up in there. Amen. And y'all are part of the backbone of the ministry. You hear me? Y'all are part of the backbone of the ministry. As, as y'all get older, as y'all get older, you better believe we're going to get older. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, when I see, I've seen different people, I've seen my aunties, a lot of y'all being a part of the ministry, y'all all came in, showed yourself strong. Deaconess Davis, Sandra Cannon, amen. Grandma, I, I, I saw all of y'all show yourself strong. But the first two aunties I did see, before they even came and laid hands on my shoulder, was my auntie Faye and Dini. And they didn't even, 
I didn't even ask them to do none of the things they'd done. They just started bringing me water and just lay hands on my shoulder and said, we got you. Then they did. They said that. They said, they said, we got you. And ever since then, I said to myself, them two ladies right there, hallelujah. They were like the pillars, the rocks of it. And I can go back. I can share also information. I, I didn't ask anybody to be an usher. Nobody. I didn't ask nobody to be an usher. Guess who came in? Deacon Cannon, he was already a deacon, so he was already just took over. He was head deacon of the ministry. But when you got a head deacon, you got a, you got a wife doing something else in ministry. Joanne, she comes in and she just takes over. She just gets the usher in. She just, she just took over that department. You ain't got to ask. When you trust God to do something, you ain't got to ask. He pulls it all together. So the nine years, God's been pulling this thing together. Hallelujah. I saw flags flying. That was Charlene. Charlene, she's throwing flags all over this place. Y'all about to watch it when she get the flag and throwing the flags around. Amen. Hallelujah. The, that, that anointing, that anointing, you know, I, I seen that. I seen that. I seen that happen. I seen God doing it. You know, I even saw even when Prophetess April come, came into the ministry, I saw her wave before she even came. She came during the first part of the pandemic. But I saw her wave before she came. And when I saw her wave before she came, before I had known it, I already knew that this person that was coming was anointed. And she was anointed. She was anointed. She was gifted. Her, her, the anointing, her, her, that's how you can tell. Remember I preached on a sermon called when God anoints your vocals, when God anoints, when he give you your sound, when God anoints that sound within you, hallelujah, your sound is anointed, hallelujah. <laughs> Just want to say that. My, my, my wife, she reads what you say. She's been following you on Facebook. She's been reading your, uh, what, what you call that? Chronicles something? Chronicles? And she reads that. And look, if he ain't receiving that, hallelujah, I know he received that. that, that any of y'all read that? Did she write, you ain't reading that, that what she wrote? I got to read what she be writing on there. Amen. Then I'm telling you. And then I remember I was so tired. I wanted to give up. I just couldn't do it no more. And a lot of us, we were busy. We was doing our own thing. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't a lot of, you know, a lot of people to help around and minister the street because this building is big. JB comes along. JB been around this ministry for at least, I think about at least four or five years now. And he's been helping out. He didn't paint that wall. That TV, that monitor up there weighs about 120 pounds. And <laughs> we had to invent some stuff to get that up there. Hallelujah. So we got that up there, and uh, JB done painted the wall about three times because we didn't tow holes in it, trying to make it look good. And he done an uh, awesome job. The brother Herb, you come down. Man, I take care of this, I take care of that. What I love about my brother. If he's seen me doing something, if he's around seeing me doing something, he'll take the broom out of my hand and say, I'll do it. That's what I love about him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So somebody, y'all just give yourself a hand praise for nine years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because... Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's our birthday all this month, but one, in one more year we'll be a decade old and we believe in God. Hallelujah. Just like we spoke it nine years ago that God is going to expand. He's going to do it big because we serve a big God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I had to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't mind waiting. I'm not anxious for nothing. If you take nine, ten years to do it, I don't mind waiting. Hallelujah. Because when you do it, you're going to do it big. Because you are a big God. Is there anything too hard for God?
because I seen them do it. I seen them heal people from cancer. I seen him do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Won't he do it? Now give God another praise. Woo. Amen. That's just it. That's But the name came from fasting and prayer. God put on my heart, he said, redeem. And then he added faith to it. And then he said, fellowship. Titus 2 and 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all our iniquity and purify into himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Be thankful for your works. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Look, I'm through. We, uh, now we want to do, hallelujah. We want to reveal the memory of the wall. If you would stand up and turn around and face the wall. Memorial Hall. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Let's have a moment of silence as we believe God. Now come on and put your hands together and give God praise. Jesus. You say they may be gone on to be with the Lord, but they are never forgotten. Never forgotten. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My uncle, my uncle up there, he he lived in Chicago, but he told me he came down, he said, Look, this is my church. And I'm a member of this church. And every time he would come down, or someone is coming down, he would always send an offering. And all of those memories that's up on that wall right there, when we, went, we remember them, they all has been a part of this ministry, been in this ministry just amaze me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We remember their legacy. And as long as we will stand as a ministry, their legacy will live on. 
Let's give God a great big praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Amen. Now they ready for the praise dance. We ready for a praise. Y'all ready to go to the next, next level? Y'all ready for the word praise dance? Y'all ready for that? Let's give God a great big hand and praise. We can hit the lights right there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Charles, make sure. Those of you that are watching via Facebook Live, uh, due to copyright, 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 we're going to pause their music as they do praise dance. Amen.
Amen. Let's give God praise for the praise team. Atmosphere shakers, amen. Let's give God praise for them. Amen, amen. Listen, we want to just make sure that the, uh, everyone that's watching is able to hear us. Now, at this time, let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to receive. How many of y'all came for a word? Some of y'all playing. How many of y'all came for a word? I need, I need to know where them word seekers is at. Yes. Give God a praise that you came for a yes. word. Come on, put your hands together if you came for a yes. word. Hallelujah. Give God a praise if you came for a word. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to point your hand towards Pastor Charles on this morning. And I want you to say, God bless Hallelujah. Pastor Charles. Send your word. Send your word, Send your word Lord. Send your word. Through Pastor Charles, yes, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's receive him with a hand amen. praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. I don't know about you, but I'm having an awesome time in the Lord today. God is so good. His mercy endures forever. Nine years. Glory be to God. Come on, we give God hand praise one more time for nine years. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm just excited. God is so good. He's so good. I would never thought I'd be here this day at this, this powerhouse church. <laughs> but God had a plan. When the first day I met Pastor Cornell, God had a plan. And guess what? I'm still in that plan. Hallelujah. I, I wanted to say something before I, I go into the word and prayer. I, I remember when I first uh, walked in the house, there was only like one other person sitting in there. It was uh, uh, Mar Mar Marie, right? Marilyn? Is it? Your auntie? Mar Marilyn? She was there. She was sitting there when I came in. Because you weren't there yet. And yeah, so I beat you there. <laughs> So when I came in, I walked, <laughs> uh, I sat down, and I, I, I just I greeted myself, I sat down, and then he came walking into the room, and he said, um, how you doing? I, and he said, uh, uh, who are you? I said, I'm Pastor Emery. And he said, oh, well, welcome. You know, and, he, and he said, you know, whatever God put in your heart to do, man of God, he said, you know, I, I just want to let you know that th we want to invite to welcome you here. He says, not only that, you're the first he, you said the first pastor to walk into that church. And I said, wow. I said, God had a plan. Because at the same time, I had just went through divorce. I was rebellious. I caught myself walking away from God. But God never walked away from me. Uh, hallelujah. That's why I'd be so excited. Because if you know my story, the things I encountered and went through, you, you will understand why I got so much joy and excitement in my heart. Defeating cancer. You know, two years later, like, wow, God, you're awesome. You know, so I'm always excited because I've been through so much, and I never gave up on God. He never gave up on me, and I had a pastor. Even when I left and went to Texas, the first time I came to the ministry, I left a few months later, went to Texas to get married again to the same woman who divorced me the first time. You know, and, and this man helped me get through. Let y'all know that now. He prayed me many days through my circumstances. And that's why I love him so much. You know, I thank God for his wife, you know, because they just show hospitality to me ever since I came to the ministry. And they're just blessed. I thank God for this. Even when I spoke a word and I said, God going to give you a building. It's going to happen real soon. And he said, that's a confirmation. Somebody else already spoke the same word. I had no idea. I'm just visiting. You know, but yet God knew the word that I spoke was confirmation to something he already knew. And that's his word for anybody in this house. Anytime somebody prophesies something to you, it's something you already know. God already done spoke it to you. You just got to be listening. If you ain't listening, you're going to miss it. So I thank God for Pastor Cornell because he's truly been a blessing. They've been a blessing in my life. The ministry has been a blessing in my life. I love all of you, and I thank God for all the people I got a chance to meet in this ministry, even those who done left. 
and he came back. But yet I thank God because God connected us all for a season. And in that season, you're going to find people coming and going. Because some people are seasonal people that God sent to the ministry. But he has some people who are longevity who are going to stand in the, the storms, at the test of time, who's going to endure through everything the pastor goes through. And I thank God for that. But I want you to stand over the room. I'm going to word of prayer. I'm going to read something I found on the number nine. And it's really good because I, I love this. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your blessing, health, and strength. I thank you, oh God, for this ministry, for allowing us to celebrate nine years, oh God, how you brought us through to this very day, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, oh God, because you didn't have to do what you did, but you did it anyhow, God. And we're grateful to tell you thank you, Lord, that this is no ordinary worship. We're able to worship God because we've been through things together and we're still standing. Together we stand, divided we fall. And Father, I thank you. Hey, that you anoint this word, oh God, that I speak that will bring life to those who are dead. Call the resurrection, God, to those who need your power to heal and deliver. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'll, I'll read the scripture in a minute. But you may be seated. Going to Isaiah 40, 43, verse 19. It says, divine completeness, the mystery of redemption. When he said nine, that just stuck in my spirit because I know what this number means. And God said divine completeness. And when you think about divine completeness, God did something. I'm going to read this. This is going to bless you because it blessed me. The number nine means divine completeness. Fulfillment and closure. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us life by dying on the cross at the ninth hour, which was 3 o'clock p.m. And it's interesting to note that that sacrifice in the temple were made in a time span of nine hours starting at 9 a.m. And, and including at 3 p.m. That is so good. Talking about redemption, the, the, the sacrifice. It says there are also, nine fruits of the Spirit, nine gifts of the Holy Spirit has equipped the church to help us guide our Christian walk and bring balance in our lives to be able to do what, do God's work on earth. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 said, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? The number nine. The Lord will only complete that which he begun. He, will, he, he is obligated to bless that which he has started. That blessed me right there. God is obligated. From something he started, he's going to finish, which lets me know he, he's obligated to bless me. Y'all be shouting on that one right there. You should have been shouting. You missed it. You know, when I thought about this, I said, God, you, you're amazing because you didn't have to bless us. But God, because you saw us in the beginning of time that on the ninth year of the ministry, God, it's going to be still productive. Still producing fruit. Now, I love the gospel when Jesus said, he said, you're going to bear fruit and your fruit shall remain. Pastor, your fruit is remaining. Jeanette, your fruit is remaining. Because God promised us that when you come together in obedience, he would be God and good work in you. Did he do some work in y'all today? Come on, raise your hand if you God done something in you that you know you didn't do yourself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord will only complete that which he begun. He is obligated to bless that which he has started. Psalms 127 verse 1. It says, except the Lord... Build the house. Didn't God build his house? We, we're benefits of the house because God built it. They labor in vain that they build it. That's the word says. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Nothing I can do, say, or accomplish can be complete in me. It is only when I am in Christ 
that I'm complete. So I have to read. I'm not going to read the rest of it because there's a whole lot. But I want to read that part of the nugget because that blessed my heart. So let me know number nine. That God has some blessings for everybody in this house. The number nine, the complete. He's completing something. He started your life over 20 years ago. I'm still benefiting over 20 years ago of prophetic words that were spoken in my life. To this very day, God's still manifesting. Oh, my God. Glory to God in the highest. Go to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Isaiah 43, verse 19. And it says, behold, I will do. We can stop right there. That's a message by itself. I will do. The great I am is declaring to us in the ninth year that I will do. See, this burning in my spirit. When I studied the scripture many years ago, I never thought this was representing today. But God said, I'm doing something in this new season. And if you don't pay attention, you're going to miss it. One thing I love about God, when the great I am shows up on the scene, guess what? Things have to change. The devil get mad at you on that kind of message. He mad at me now. Because I'm speaking truth. He goes, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So God said, I will do. So what is it that you need God to do for you today? So Sister Vivian already made it clear. She needs healing in her eyes. So God said, I will do. You might have diabetes acting up, Deacon Allen, and your vision acting up. God said, I will do. So if I was to have a subject today, it's going to be, I will do. Because one thing about it, when you get a revelation of the I am, when he showed up when Moses on Mount Sinai, he stood there and said, Lord, I want to see your glory. And God said, Moses, no man can see my glory and live. He said, but I will do. Say so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. So when he hit him in the cleft of the rock, he said, I'm going to pass you by. But I'm only going to let you see my backside. You won't see my backside. Here because if you look in my face, you're going to die. But my backside is enough glimpse of the glory you can still benefit from. God is still revealing his glory. In the ninth year, God is revealing his glory in the house today. This ain't no ordinary worship. Hey, I'm going to give it all to you, God. Everything on the inside of me, God, I'm going to lay it at your feet because you're worthy. Glory to God. Let's go on a little further. Go up a little further. Verse 18, God says to Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied, tell the people, remember not, remember ye not the former thing. You know what God spoke to me a long time ago? He said a lot of people, they get stuck in the memories of the devastating things that have affected their life. I'm trying to take it forward, but something in the mindset got you stuck. Some are stuck in a pit of despair. Some are stuck in sorrow. Some stuck in grief. Some stuck in anger. Some stuck in pain. Some stuck in disbelief. God says, whatever it is that got you stuck, remember not the former thing. Because I will do. Then he goes on, neither consider. Don't pay attention. Let it go. God, I'm speaking to somebody in this house today. Let go of your past. Let go of your past. Because your past affects your future. You cannot go forward holding on to a luggage of the things of the past that 
hurt you. Some people still hurt from a broken marriage over 20 years ago. They stuck. Some are stuck in a spirit of infirmity. Hear what I'm saying? There's a spirit of infirmity that come upon you because of unbelief. When you get rebellious, you start doubting God's word. God said there's a spirit of infirmity that will enter your house. And you wonder why your house is in confusion. God says, stop remembering the things of old. We got to grow up. The ninth year means maturity. We got to advance in the kingdom. We got to grow up and stop crying over milk. God says, now to start eating the meat of the word. Because you've been on a bottle too long, it's time to get up, dry the tears from your eyes, pull yourself up by your bootstrap, get back into the vineyard and work for the kingdom of God. Woo, glory to God. Then he goes on, verse 19, after declaring, I will do a new thing. So I think about something new. I can go to the department store, see a brand new shirt or some trousers or some shoes, some socks, some underwear, something that's new that nobody ever touched, nobody ever worn. Guess what? I can buy it. But check this out. God has benefits in the kingdom that you don't have to pay for. He has some promises in the book you ain't got to pull out your money to pay for. He has some things that you haven't even touched. And God says, I'm waiting on you to get your mind in order with the word of God so I can pour it into your life. Woo, glory. Then he says, Yeesh, he said, Yeesh, he said, it shall spring forth. So this new thing, it's rapidly moving. You ever seen a bunny rabbit? When you see a bunny rabbit in, in, the, in the park or in your backyard, they sit there and they watch them, right? But when you start approaching them, they jump. They start leaving real quick. They spring forth. They can't just walk like us, but they jump, right? Why? Because they're trying to get away from you. God says the new thing is going to leap into your life by the spirit of the living God, and you're going to know when it comes. He says, shall ye not know it? It's a question. Are you aware when God is doing something new in your life? Are you paying attention to the prophetic words? God says, every time I speak a word into your life, are you going to pay attention? You know what? We have a lot of folk coming to the house of God every week. Still ain't listening to the word. Pastor preach a good message. They sing a good song. They still ain't listen to the word. Right? Because their minds are still stuck outside the door. Whatever's outside the door needs to stay outside the door. But when I come into the holy place where God's presence dwells, I have to get my mind in order to receive a connection from the Spirit so God can downpour a rhema word into my spirit to change my life. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be long on this. I heard a, a, a story of a little boy. He went into a, a candy store. Didn't have no money, but he wanted the candy. And the owner of the store was over the counter, had this big old jar mixed with candy. And it sat there. Little boy gazing at the candy, desiring to have the candy, right? So as he's looking for the candy, the owner said, you don't have no money, do you? He said, no. He said, reach your hand and get what you want. Little boy just looked at him. And he says, go ahead. It's okay. Reach your hand to the jar and get what you want. And he, he just looked at the man and wouldn't say nothing. 
So the owner, third time, said, reach into the jar and get what you want. So he's looking at the owner, so the owner gets disgusted with the little boy because he reaches the jar to get the candy, and I'm giving it to you for free. Follow me with this one. So the owner, he gets frustrated. He reaches hands into the jar, pulls out a whole bunch of candy, said, here, take it. He said, why didn't you reach into the jar to get the candy? Check this out. He said, my hands were too little. I knew yours was big enough to get more than enough. I come to tell you today that God's hands are so big, he has more than enough for you. All you got to do is just to open up your heart to receive the benefits. It doesn't matter how long you stare at the promise. doesn't matter how long you read the word. doesn't matter how much you labor for the word. God said if you look intently to the spirit of the living God, so I will reach in and begin to pour the all of every benefit I have for you in your life. Woo, glory. My God. Uh, this mess is hot off the press. <laughs> this is hot off the press today. I didn't even study this. It just came to me like this. But then God. He said, I will. He said, I will again. What do you need God to do? What do you will God to do in your life? What are you willing God to do in your life? He said, I will. Even make a way. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. In the wilderness. How many times you feel like you're in a dark place? How many times that pressure trying to bring you down in your house when you're by yourself? How many times your body got afflicted and you ask, where is God? God, do you care about me? God, why are you not answering me? God, why are you not looking at me? You're serving. I've been praying. I've been fasting and nothing happens. But he says, I will make a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. See, you have dry seasons that come sometime. But God said, don't be dismayed. Don't be weary. Don't give up. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because I will. See, the rivers represent life. God said, when I bless you in life, you bless her with life. You bless her with life. You bless him with life. Why? Because the rivers are flowing with the rivers of life from the throne room of God. And God said, everybody, hallelujah, can benefit from the rivers of everlasting water. Glory to God. <laughs> My God, I don't know about you. But I know God is doing something because every day there's a stirring in my spirit. You know one thing I found out, even when I mess up, I make mistakes, there's a river flowing. Even when I get combob discombobulated in my mind, I get confused and trouble seems to come from everywhere I turn, there's a river flowing. And all I got to do is tap into the river. Because in the river, everything I need. God, if you watch the story of rivers, they begin to flow. They never stop flowing. They keep on flowing and flowing and flowing. God says there's anointing that's flowing in this place today. It's a river of the presence of God that's flowing in the atmosphere. And God says you got to touch it with your faith. You got to believe it by faith. You got to receive it by faith because it's keep on flowing. Doesn't matter what the devil say. Doesn't matter how you put doubt in your mind. You got to walk in faith. You got to stand firm footed. Tell the devil no more. Not today. I'm not receiving no more. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 
I've been sanctified by the Spirit of God. My conscience has been washed with clean water. My heart is renewed by the Spirit of God. And God would do what he promised to do. You might have a wayward child. You've been praying for your child to come back to the Lord. I'm praying for my son. Come back to the Lord. I believe God's going to do it. It doesn't matter where they may stray to. They can't stray away from God. Like the prodigal son found himself in a pig pen. Wanted to eat the husk of the pigs and couldn't eat it. And he got into a dark place. He got into a miserable place. He got into a place he was stuck in his mind until he came to himself. Hallelujah. When you come to yourself, there's a stirring on the inside. Some begin to juvenile on the inside like a fire in your bones. You got to get up on your feet. You got to say, Father, here I come. I know I messed up. I'm not worthy to be called your child anymore. But God, I want to thank you. Just make me one of your higher servants. That would be good enough. But God said, no, that ain't the plan. The plan was to restore him back to sonship and kingship. And when God brought him back to the house, the father was looking up for all. He saw his son coming. Father, he ran. He ran to his son and received him. And begin to embrace him. Why? Because he loved his son. The father said, go kill the fattest cow. Bring me the best ring. Bring me the best robe. Because I got to restore my son who was lost, but now he's found. He was blind. But now he can see. Why? Because I would do. The I will of the I am says I will do. I will restore you. I will revive you. I will refresh you. I will heal you. I will deliver you. I will set you free. Why? Because I am that I am. I'm a God who's more than enough. I got enough grace for you, for everybody in this room. And my grace is sufficient. Everything you need, I am that I am. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I am shows up, my bank account overflows. When I am shows up, my cupboard is filled. When I am shows up, I have all sufficiency. Everything I need is in the I am. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're worthy. You've been good from ages past to this very day. You're still good. You keep on making a way out of no way when I can't see past the fog. God, you are light and darkness. You are lamp unto my feet. You're everything I need, God. You will walk with me. You will talk with me. You will tell me that I am your own. Glory to God. Why don't you stand out of the room? Hallelujah. Glory to God. My God. He said, the beast of the fields shall honor me. The dragons and the owls, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. That's a declaration that God spoke for everybody in this room, for your family, your children, your, your children's children. 
This is a declaration. God said he would give you drink because you're his chosen one. Are you thirsty today? You need a drink. The woman at the well, she came looking for a drink. And she found the fountain of living waters. Are you thirsty today? Are you expecting the great I am to show up on the scene? Whatever you need today, God says, reach up and grab it. Pastor said it earlier. Just reach up and grab it. Believe it by faith that everything you need, he will supply according to his riches and glory. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you as we lift our hands in obedience to your will, God, that you begin to open up the windows of heaven, pour into our lives blessings beyond measures, God. That we live in the overflow. That we trust you at your word, God. That your word will not come back to you empty. But every word you spoke, God, you will fulfill in our lives in this season. We thank you, Lord God, for our wayward children coming back home. We thank you, Lord God, that our bodies are healed, our minds are renewed. By the spirit of the living God, and I give you glory give you honor, and I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody say, God will. Somebody say it again, God will. Amen, amen, amen. He said, I will. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord is yay and amen. He's saying, I will. Whatever you ask, I will. Hallelujah. Mama, whatever you need, I will. Hallelujah. He's going to do it. I'm just, that's, that's an awesome sermon. Amen. That's how God just turned around and just said, you know what? I, I will dump some in your spirit. So you can give to God's people. Did y'all get fed today? Come on, give God praise. Well, I'm not going to hold you up no, no more longer. Amen. We have refreshments. And uh, we have cake down there. And they got diet cake. Just get a small piece. Just get a tiny, tiny gift. Give him a tiny piece. Amen. Give Deacon Cannon a tiny piece. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, I'm just I'm just excited. I just, you know what, that is just, just so amazing. Let's give God praise for Pastor Charles. Amen. I was thinking, and we finna get ready to look, I was thinking like, those of you that are sitting on this side of the pole, right here, you're sitting where the vestibule is going to be, right? This is where we're going to be like, yeah, the area, this area right here, past this pole, going that way all the way to the end of the gate. If you go outside, you see a gate, end of that gate next to the house over there. That's how deep the sanctuary is going to be. It's going to be a little bit wider, but it's going to be that deep, amen? And the poor pit would be way down on that end down there. Amen. So, but this area that y'all in over here right now, this is where y'all will be, you know, it's going to be a, a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to be a uh, coffee stand, a bar, a reception desk. It's going to be a lot of stuff, bathrooms. And you'll no longer have to walk up steps. We're going to have a ramp coming right up, coming from this side. Up. This, the entrance is going to be over here. You'll be able to come on up the ramp right here. Here's in her bathroom. It's going to be the area that we go there, downstairs down there that we'll be going to get the food at. That area is going to be huge. It's going to be big because all this is going to be connecting from here all the way across to that back end over there. So that's going to be a really big area right there. And I got to ask y'all one question. Won't he do it? <laughs> Won't he do it? Now give God another praise. Hallelujah. Everybody standing to their feet. Hallelujah. Thank 
kids here and says, amen. Uh, come on, just, just give, give, give them pray. We about to go. Give them pray. But beef, I pray. It's, it's some, it's, I thought I'd seen, it's a four different, the cake got carrot cake on it. I want y'all to leave the carrot cake side alone. I know I'm not supposed to be eating a lot of it, but leave the carrot cake side alone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You want to join hands with somebody if you don't mind? Amen. You can sanitize your hand out the words. Amen. Now look at that person and say, don't hurt my hand. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, as we get ready to go from this place, somebody repeat out to me, Lord, bless the hand that I'm holding. Increase the hand that I'm holding. Heal the hand that I'm holding. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as we get ready to go from this place, but never from your presence, may your rest rule and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. Let's give God praise. I'm going to need a couple of y'all help, uh, men, if y'all can help me get these two big chairs up out of here. Amen.